This is your weekly trip to paradise, Louisiana style, with Gary Rasponi. Paradise, Louisiana is also brought to you by Baton Rouge Coca-Cola Bottling Company, Vinny's Car Wash and Oil Change, CCA Louisiana, and the CCA Louisiana Star Tournament, Dimco, and by Farm Bureau Insurance. Welcome to Happy Days here at <laughs> Superior Bay Tackle on Sagan Lane. Welcome back to Paradise, Louisiana. You see, I'm a lot happier. Uh, I'm not happy the duck season is fast ending. Uh, then we got some youth hunts. I got some duck reports this week. Uh, I got some great fishing reports coming from the Pontchartrain Basin and Mystico and all that area. Uh, again, uh, you can see Chaz and them. His reports have been outstanding. Uh, different fish. It all depends on the on the tide and low water and how much how cold it is. But uh, even in the cold weather, people catching fish. So you stay tuned. I'm gonna try to wrap up the duck season with the few reports I got, and then uh, give you a good fish report and tell you. I'm about to get out, like I've been promising y'all, okay. to get out in the outdoors and do some videoing. I had a couple cancellations again. They didn't want to go on them cold days, but it seemed like them cold days were pretty good. Stay tuned. You're watching Paradise, Louisiana, Superior Bait and Tackle on Say Good Night. For the thirsty, for those who hang out in packs, for heroes, for sidekicks. For those who see the glass half empty, for those who see it half full, for those on the right, for those on the left, for those with nicknames, for those with curves, for people that cycle, for people that recycle, for BFFs, for frenemies, for those with style, for lovers, for families, for big families, for everyone. I've been asking him to change the oil for months now. And he never did. So I finally just went to Benny's. They even washed my car for free. Uh-huh. And you know what? It was amazing. Yeah, I left Benny's and got home before Rob even knew I was gone. <laughs> Benny? Who the heck is Benny? As members of a Touchstone Energy Cooperative, we've all got a job to do. And the more we work together, the more we save. That's the power of your co-op membership. Demco, your Touchstone Energy Cooperative. We put faith in our vehicles to connect us. We understand how important it is to have transportation you can rely on. So no matter what the road ahead brings, we'll be there. Offering you and your family the support that's made Farm Bureau Insurance a trusted name for over 70 years. You deserve more. You deserve a promise. This is Don Dubuque asking you to join me as a member of the Coastal Conservation Association. For 30 years, CCA has worked in Louisiana to conserve our incredible fisheries, making sure that our fishing is great today and for generations to come. Whether looking out for redfish and specks, eliminating gill nets, building reefs across the coast, or work at the state capitol and in D.C., CCA is doing what's best for the fish and the sport we love so much. Your $30 membership will ensure that this work and our great fishing endures well into the future. Go to CCALouisiana.com and join CCA today. All right, we're going to start the morning off trolling here in <clears throat> the man made canals with the Green Hornet. Let's see what we can do. There we go. 
Oh, green hornet getting the little rascals today. <clears throat> I caught a few trolling and we noticed our bites are coming from the same area. So I just dropped the trolling motor and we're gonna just hone in on this one specific section right here. We're catching in about 20 foot of water, up on the bank, throwing way out. I just don't feel like a very big one. Usually when you're trolling, it's a lot of really quality trout, but we're starting off the morning here with just some schoolies. But we are getting bites, catching a few fish. I was trolling with the trolling motor this time and caught this one. Look at this little rascal here. He is not going to make the cut. That is not your typical wintertime trolling speckle trout. But when you're trolling with the trolling motor, I like to go about, I don't know, 1.7 to 2 miles an hour, somewhere in there. You can bomb it out. On these, you can just let out about two full cast distances and that really works. I got another pole rigged up with a piece of lead core that helps get it down some too. And another thing we do is we can we'll troll with the big engine, but when we do, we need to put a bucket out to be able to slow it down. And I just like to twitch that rod tip every so often. I like to keep the rod tip low to the water to help bring the bait lower than the water column. But see if we can get a few more. And I'll use my pole. That's got a little piece of lead line when I'm doing that. And then we'll find some and then just put the trolling motor down and jig them. Or if we, you know, when we, we're not catching them jigging, I can just put the trolling motor on like half speed and just start trolling again. But um, there's some fish in here. Nothing really incredibly impressive. I'm not really impressed with the size too much. This is a keeper right here. But I'm using the Green Hornet and Sam's using the Pink Champagne and putting a few fish together. I'm showing a few fish on a little ranch. Yeah, whenever you whenever you bump into one trolling though, you got a long, you got to just keep cranking in nice and slow. You don't want to tear their mouth. It's a long, drawn out uh, process of railing the fish in because you, you got to let so much line out so that bait can get down to the bottom. And we typically like to, you know, troll in 10 to 25 foot of water. So depending on how deep it is, is how much line you let out. This one feels like a decent one here though. A lot of different ways you can do this. I simply just like putting a matrix on a jig head, like this green hornet right here, letting a lot of line out. It's a great, great thing to do when the weather's real tough as these canals are all protected. And all of these man-made canals in the North Shore, they all hold these these fish like this in the winter time. Um, got a real foggy morning today. We'll probably go run around and do something different, but this is a great place to be in the fog, nice and safe in here. And uh, we're doing, we're having some fun catching some fish. The green hornet and the um, pink champagne are prevailing well. We're using half ounce and three eighths ounce jig heads. It's really good to mix it up, do it a little bit of both, and a lot of times one lure or the jig head size will be the one out fishing the other. Uh, that was nice. Nice quick start. I haven't got the motor turned off yet. Before we went back in this other part of the canal, put the boat just in park and uh, they could cast in this current right here at the mouth of the canal and boom. See if they got a handful here because it barely, it got to the bottom and already had a fish on. He's going to be close. Alright, so we just caught a few right here in the mouth. You never want to pass up the mouths of any of these canals. You got to give it a quick peek. Sometimes they can st stage up right there because all of the current is a suction zone, but we 
gonna start the engine. First thing we're gonna do is throw the bucket out. It's gonna slow the motor down as the motor does pull these lures a little bit too fast. You put that bucket down, it slows it down at a perfect speed. Now the next thing I wanna show you is like I got a uni to uni knot here going from fluoro, our matrix fluoro onto, I just keep a little bit of that lead core line to help get this bait down to the bottom. Just go ahead and clean the lure off. And we're gonna just make a short little cast out. What that lead core line does is it makes it to where you don't have to let quite as much line out. And you can go a little bit faster and still get that bait down. We're gonna let the whole spool out. I got this spool set just for just right where I like it in the, at, when we're trolling at 15 or so foot of water. And like I said, we're gonna try to keep the boat between a mile and a half to two miles an hour. Pretty much let all the line out and begin our troll. See if we can relocate these fish in the back of the canal. And all I like to do is just ride tip down and make little subtle jolts with the lure pop 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 pull it out and then let it fall back and then what that lure will do it comes up real fast and it'll kill so it's giving it a little action i mean it's fine to just put the poles in the pole holder and let it pull the matrix shed does a great job of just swimming naturally through the water but i like to give it a little bit of action a little bit of play let's move towards the back see if we can do any good if not it's all good we've already had a nice little start to the morning Got this on the pole. I got the little lead core line leader on. Watch, you'll be able to see it. There it goes. It's coming through the eyelets now. You'll be able to see how much I have. I'm still railing it in. Still got some more of it in. And then that's it. Oh, nice fish. Here we go, baby. That's what we're looking for. That's more the size of what I would call what's typical for trolling is something like that that's that's your typically average size trout when you're trolling in the winter again the lead core line i got this attached to the half ounce jig head and a little piece of that matrix floor up maybe about four feet very good setup right here very easy to just have a little piece of that lead core on two uni to uni knots that way you don't have to go through all of that stuff. You know, if you don't, I don't have all of those tread uh, trolling poles. So just a little piece of that lead core makes it all just good enough for that deeper water. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this nice, simple, short and sweet episode. Trolling matrix sheds and the man-made canals off of Lake Pontchartrain, catching beautiful speckled trout. This is one of the most relaxing ways to fish to catch trout, but also very effective. Make sure to subscribe to our Matrix Bait Box. Get your hands on some of the green hornets and pink champagnes that we were. I've been asking him to change the oil for months now, and he never did. So I finally just went to Benny's. They even washed my car for free. Uh huh. And you know what? It was amazing. Yeah, I left Benny's and got home before Rob even knew I was gone. <laughs> Benny? Who the heck is Benny? As members of a Touchstone Energy Cooperative, we've all got a job to do. And the more we work together, the more we save. That's the power of your co-op membership. Demco, your Touchstone Energy Cooperative. For the thirsty, for those who hang out in packs, for heroes, for sidekicks, for those who see the glass half empty, for those who see it half full, for those on the right, for those on the left, for those with nicknames, for those with curves, for people that cycle, for people that recycle, for BFFs, for frenemies, for those with style. For lovers, for families, for big families, for everyone.
Welcome back to Paradise, Louisiana. I'm going to give you all a quick duck report. Uh, you know the whole year has been sort of sort of slow on a lot of people. Started out good, got slow. These cold fronts moved a few ducks in. A few people I talked to was killing them. I talked to Bobby Black. Uh, them boys were out there deer hunting. They heard the ducks in the, in the breaks over there in, in Tinsaw. Uh, they... They went back out and they've caught a few, they had a few gray ducks and a, and a few mallards that they killed up in the tensaw in the breaks. Uh, I didn't get any report from Top Gun, but I got a report from uh, Dwayne Briggs uh, up in, where he'd been hunting Arkansas. He didn't tell me exactly where he had been hunting in northwest Arkansas, northeast Arkansas, but he gave me a report he sent me a picture of his four mallards. He said he had no off ducks, no other ducks he saw flying in there, but they got a youth weekend up there too, wherever he's hunting, either in North Louisiana or Arkansas. He didn't mention this week, but uh, he's going to take his uh, grandson and they'll be hunting there. Now, uh, a good report I got from my, my friends and a few pictures, Louis D. John and his, his son-in-law and his cousins and them, uh, Josh Scott, Jonathan Savio and them, they hunt, they're blind over there at, at Old John, and they did well. Uh, Saturday and Sunday, they did pretty good, but he didn't tell me a whole lot about Saturday, but he sent me a, he sent me a Saturday picture, and it he, he, he was almost near the limits. He had teal, they had Ring nets, they had spoonies, a lot of spoonies, they had gadwalls. They saw mallards and pintails flying, but they never, they were up high and where they were landing, they never came close enough for them to shoot, but they were tickle pink. Uh, he said they may, they picked up some decoys, but they may go out and hunt a youth hunt next weekend, or the last weekend for it. Uh, my, I didn't get a report from my brother. I called him, woke him up, but he, I got a few reports from him. They did great Saturday. They had almost a limit. They were too shy of limit Saturday. And his blind at O'John, o and uh, it was him and Larry, his normal partners, uh, Larry the Strap, Duke Landry, and uh, his son, Derek, responded. They did the same thing. They, they had a lot of teal, had spoonies, and, uh, and ringnecks. But he says, Saturday? They, they, they got a late start. They didn't kill before teal, but if they'd have been there early or they'd have been ready early in the blind, they were cooking sites and doing something, he said. And, and, and they started coming in in big flights, and then they quit coming in. They wound up killing four. So, and then send me a picture. Maybe Duke could send me one, but my brother, that's too complicated for him. But uh, thank you anyway for the report. Sorry I woke you up. Now, the other other duck reports I get, I didn't get them. I, I don't know what I'll call them. I knew last week Brian Briggs and them picked the decoys up. They didn't, I didn't think it was worth it. I heard a few people that will hunt a youth hunt next week, so I, I'll see if I can get a report. I, I would like to go, but I got to. I got a banquet in New Orleans, so I ain't going to be able to go, but there's a good chance I'm going to be fishing Lake Pontchartrain. So when I come back, I got a great fishing report. Oh, almost missed. My almost adopted godchild. I call him an um, adopted godchild because ever since he's been a little boy, you know, I've got him in some hunting trips. He always gives me reports for fishing ponds in the neighborhood. He's a grown man now. And, uh, he, had his, he, he got his first hog killed at a big sow. He was hunting with his dad, and he had his nephew along. He said thanks for his dad, Alan, and his nephew, Mason. They helped him drag that, that big sow out and clean it, and he sent some pictures. Chris going to pick out the ones that are good, and, and we're going to show you. So congratulations, Seth. You know I love you, boy. I'm proud of you. Thank you for sending a report. Keep in touch. So that's the hunting point. When we come back, I got the... Berkeley, I will go see a fishing report, and it's a good one. We put faith in our vehicles to connect us. We understand how important it is to have transportation you can rely on. 
So no matter what the road ahead brings, we'll be there. Offering you and your family the support that's made Farm Bureau Insurance a trusted name for over 70 years. You deserve more. You deserve a promise. This is Don Dubuque asking you to join me as a member of the Coastal Conservation Association. For 30 years, CCA has worked in Louisiana to conserve our incredible fisheries, making sure that our fishing is great today and for generations to come. Whether looking out for redfish and specks, eliminating gill nets, building reefs across the coast, or work at the state capitol and in D.C., CCA is doing what's best for the fish and the sport we love so much. Your $30 membership will ensure that this work and our great fishing endures well into the future. Go to CCALouisiana.com and join CCA today. Welcome to the Berkeley Abu Garcia Fishing Report. And uh, let me tell you, it's not a lot of it, but every ones I got were good. Uh, a lot of people have been very busy, uh, still do redoing the camps. Every time I get ready to call the Grand Island and talk to Buggy and them, something happens and I ain't talked to him, so I don't want to give you a half, what well, I don't want to use that bad word. I'm going to tell it anyway, a half-assed report. But uh, we are getting reports from Leeville and them people. I'm talking about high water tortoise. Uh, Speedy and them are catching fish. Uh, all those tortoise are catching them. They're back in the marsh. They're catching multitude of different fish, but they're catching big trout. Sometimes when the wind lays down and they back up in there and fishing and they're moving out in warm weather and moving them in shallow water, they're catching them on top water. Top water. You know how much fun that is. And they're catching big trout. So, so I don't have any pictures this week, but that was the report coming from there. Uh, best reported every week, Mike Brantley uh, and Chris Roberts, and the, all the captains over there down in Slidell area. Uh, him and uh, Chris Roberts, they ran a, a seven-man trip together, two boats. They went to the Mr. Go. They were fishing fresh shrimp, Carolina rig, about seven foot of water in a Charmat area. Look at these pictures. The redfish were there. I said, Mike, you've been killing the bass on live shrimp, spinner bait. Y'all killing. He said, the water was low, low. He said, these people came from South Carolina. It was a bachelor trip. He said, they wanted redfish. He says, most people know when you fish in that area and the tides are low, water low, they congregate. You find them right off the drop off. They knew where they were and made these people happy. So you see that string of Mike and them and Chris, they, they stay together. All them captains, especially at Island Marina, same reports are coming. Those people got live shrimp, the point and them. They all got live shrimp. And uh, it's a no it's a no miss deal. If you catch the weather right, talk to them people, especially Island Marina, they'll give you all the information you need. So the same thing. I'm hearing reports from down in Venice. The river came up. It's starting to fall. Ron Lambert and them are saying that uh, they can find them bull reds right now and catch them on top. They got a lot of people traveling this time of year to catch them. And then a lot of people going to Grand Isle right now and wanting to fish to Wahoo and Tuna. I didn't have no reports, but last week everybody was telling me when that – it lays down, they get a lot of that north wind, and it's not real strong. Keep it back. When it starts laying down, they're catching. They're going and catch them offshore. So you can just call them. Call them, say, get a response, say, call y'all. What's the offshore fishing like? So do that with any of those marinas, and then maybe they'll give me some more reports. Now, I don't want to miss nothing. Uh, I talked to Blaine Salters. Blaine Salters, the Sackley man, the jig pole man, Blaine, he got on the phone. And he said, what you doing, Blaine? I don't hear from him. He said, I'm busy, I'm busy. He said, everybody's ordering jig poles right now. He said, I've been to those shows, and everybody wants them. He said, they want them from 14 foot now. They want 14. I said, well, Blaine, 14 foot jig pole? You know, we're going 10, 12. He said, 14 tick. He said, yeah. He said, everybody got those, what you call it, Chris? What you call that, 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 that live scope? And they put their live scope, and they get them, and, and they don't want to spook them. 
So they stand further out and they're using 14, is that right? Yeah. They, you, 14 foot jig poles so they don't have to get close. And they, they jig poling, fishing down there, tight lining, and catching those sack legs. So Blaine, good luck. He said, I got a report for you. I'll call you back. He didn't lie. He just got busy. He didn't call me back. But I, I, I'm going to have him on the show pretty soon. We're going to go fishing. And if you're watching the chief of police and Baker, you've been crazy busy. And that river came back up. But if it drops, you promise me we're going to go catch a catfish trip. And I'm going to take you on a Sacolay trip. Everywhere I went this week, everybody wanted to know where to Sacolay. Sackley, call me. Sackley, where they at? I was getting a few reports. Chad said they're going to start catching Sackley and Slidell, but a man come in the store a while ago, and, uh, and Mr. Waller, <laughs> he told me, he said, uh, I, I got a report. He said, we were bass fishing in the spillway this weekend, and uh, they had some people coming out of Flat Lake and Duck Lake and the people in the south part of Spillway. So they put in a dry run. He was fishing with the Central Fishing Club. I said, well, will y'all catch any bass? He said, very few, but very few were caught one. So the Central Bass Club, which I support and a sponsor, I got nephews and, and uh, kids that I support that uh, fish at the Central Club. They fished out of dry runs and uh, they caught very little fish. It was tough. Now, I saw the man buy a lot of plastics over here and he hit them. So I, I, I don't know what I can say about him, but uh, I, <laughs> I saw I got a glimpse and it was June bug color plastic. So what he said? He's running away. That's my boy. He's hollering over here. Now, I think that's it uh, for his fishing report. But, uh, that, that's it. If you want to catch some fish right now, them guides down in uh, in the Slidell area in Lake Pontrain. That's where it's at, folks. Keep it up. I'm going to try to be there this weekend. Uh, I'm going to stay there three days. And I hope I can give it back to you. I hope I ain't a black cloud. Hey, keep praying for the people with COVID. Keep praying with those people. Keep praying for those people that are recovering and doing a good job. But in my friends right there at Island Marina, I'd be surprised. You know, they had a lot of damage, but they all rolling. God bless them. God bless Louisiana. We'll see you next week. Paradise, Louisiana is also brought to you by Baton Rouge Coca-Cola Bottling Company, Benny's Car Wash and Oil Change, CCA Louisiana, and the CCA Louisiana Star Tournament, Demco, and by Farm Bureau Insurance.